Hello and welcome to another episode of Dire Times. I'm your host, David Dyer, and now I know that there's been a lot of controversy over magazine capacity. But I say, who needs magazines when you can go belt fed? Today, we're going to take a look at the Browning 1919 A6, which is a civilian legal semi automatic weapon. So, wait, what's the point of owning one if you can't go full auto? Well, welcome, Marnie, and I'm hoping by the end of this video, I'll be able to convince you that these are a whole lot of fun and you don't really need full auto. Great, where do we start? Actually, with a little bit of a history lesson. Cool. The Browning 1919 was originally produced during World War II and weighs about 31 pounds. However, there are several variants for different applications, such as aircraft, vehicle mounts, and infantry use. The original gun was chambered in 30-06, but this model fires 308. These are civilian legal and can be purchased for about two grand uh, or more through an authorized dealer, or if you're machine savvy, you can purchase a kit and build one yourself. So we had to come down off the mountain, uh, the beautiful backdrop is gone, into a little more safer location so we can really do some shooting. Marnie, I'm gonna show you how to set up uh, the two styles of tripods, okay. uh, both the anti-aircraft and the infantry. Um, Great. And yes, and unfortunately, sometimes when you buy the gun, the tripods do not come with them. Mm -hmm. And now this one is actually a uh, MG42, old German MG42 mount that has been modified uh, to take the 1919 uh, into a nice little quick detached mount. Uh, it's a really easy setup. Okay. Uh, much like any other camera tripod, just loosen up the uh, the bottom area in there. Drop it into a uh, about the right height, which for an anti-aircraft tripod, not saying we're going to shoot aircraft here, but you know, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> we should get RC planes. That would be awesome. Awesome, yeah. Next time. Uh, <laughs> so I like this about uh, just just stir them high because you want to imagine the gun about here. If you'll lock those in for me. Sure. All right. And it has these nice big spikes on the bottom, so you can get this great dig in. Uh, but up top, uh, these actually are tension, so you could hold this out, let go, and it'll actually stay there, which obviously you wouldn't want this. But I want to put them out at about a 45 degree angle. Okay. Nice, nice wide base. Couple feet on the pedals, nice locked in, nice solid platform. Swing this bad boy up. All right, what I'm going to have you do is okay. there's a little button right there. If you'll press that in, okay. just watch your fingers. I'm going to slide this right down in there like that. Good to go. Let go of it. All right. And now we're pretty well set up. Awesome. Um, now, of course, uh, when you do mount this thing the first time, this carriage, it just takes these two bolts on the bottom of the weapon. Really simple to put in. Uh, there's a, I'll spin her around here. There's this bolt on either side here that actually controls the tension. So you can, so you can kind of raise and lower the weapon and you can adjust how, how intense you want that. And in this, uh, if you want to lock this into place, you can actually, adjust the elevation with this nice big screw washer down here and nice. be able to keep a yeah nice nice full range of motion here yeah. <laughs> uh, it's all about the motion it really is it really is <laughs> so that's pretty much the mg42 uh modified setup um so wait what are we going to shoot today well i've actually got something really special for you boombinaries.com happened to provide uh <laughs> Couple, couple pounds of explosives. Oh, so uh, these are awesome targets. We're gonna mix them up, uh, come back and uh, see what you think. Oh, that's awesome. Let's mix those up and get them down range. This episode of Dire Times is sponsored by BoomBinaries.com. And we're gonna be using their amazing military grade explosive targets. That's awesome. Oh. Yes, it is. And as far as exploding targets go, I really feel that these are the best you can buy. Most exploding target makers don't refine their oxidizer, but BoomBinaries.com does. <clears throat> now what that means is a much better mix and a much louder boom. Their targets come in one pound sizes, but are easily customizable to a half pound size with a Ziploc bag or something like that. So how does it work? Well, it's simple. You just knead the bag a bit and then mix in the little bag that's inside the larger bag Give it a shake until it's all one solid color and then set it down range and it has to be shot by rifle caliber uh, to actually get it to set off. So they're very, very safe in addition to, you know, being a pretty awesome exploding target. 
The Browning 1919 is a pretty unforgiving weapon system, so it's really important that we have some basic safety uh, parameters set up. Okay. You're going to definitely want a pair of ballistic goggles, which you have some sunglasses that will work. Okay. Uh, hearing protection, which we'll put in shortly. And the most important thing that you could have for the Browning 1919 is a pair of gloves. <laughs> uh, this thing is notorious for chewing up fingers. Oh. Yeah, so let's get this stuff on and uh, okay. get shooting. Great. All right, the targets are set up down range. We are ready to safely load and shoot the 1919. We're only missing just a few things. Bullets. That's one. Now the aircraft tripod comes with this nice little uh, ammo can retainer here on the side that you can just really quickly attach your ammo can and you're good to go. Uh, close the feed tray up here. Uh, now this weapon has a tendency to get very hot so uh, all your ammo strips come with this nice little metal pull tab which part of the reason why we wear gloves is you can insert this into the side of the weapon and pull it through until it clicks into place and then all your ammo is nice and secure. Then all it's left to do is charge the weapon. Now there is a crucial thing that you want to know. I'm going to go ahead and clear the weapon so we can flip it around and take a look. The weapon is clear and empty. All right, so I'm going to swing this around so you can see the charging handle. Uh, it's still pointed in a safe direction. Anytime you charge this weapon, you want to make sure you do it palm up. So you see where my thumb is? Mm -hmm. Out of the way. One of the things that can happen with this weapon is it does get very hot due to the amount of ammo you can fire through it and the rate of fire uh, that it can sustain. So that means that a round can actually cook off. What's that mean? Well, cooking off is when the powder inside the bullet is ignited by the heat of the chamber. Mm -hmm. So that means if the round is in there uh, and it just sets itself off, then you're not actually operating the trigger and it's doing something you don't want it to do. Okay. Now, there's a couple of different ways of stopping that from happening. You can, you can shove something in the belt to interrupt it. You can actually break the belt, which will stop it from firing. But this is a semi-automatic weapon, so it's only going to fire that one round. Um, and so, it, it, I mean, it may go, doof, doof, but it's it's not going to cut loose like a full auto would. It just just fire rapidly and out of control. Okay, good. So, and that and that's a pretty rare thing to happen, and it's an extremely rare thing to happen in the semi-automatic version uh, because you may not get enough ammo in it to get it that hot, <laughs> uh, considering one round, one pull. So, uh, once you have your belt in. Go ahead and show us how that's done. Okay. Ah. Pull it till it clicks. There you go. Okay. All right, so it's in place. So the weapon is still pointed in a safe direction. We'll lower the barrel a little bit. Go ahead and charge it twice for me. And the reason we charge it twice is because the first round actually sets it up it strips that the uh, little metal pull tab off, mm -hmm. and then the second pull actually pulls the round out of the out of the link and chambers it into the barrel. Okay. Now, something that you must know about this weapon, in addition, is it does not have a safety. So I consider this weapon safe when the feed tray is up and clear, and the bolt is to the rear, so you can ins visually inspect the chamber. Okay. So now this brings us to the second possible way. I'm gonna lower this thing down that you can load the 1919. And if you don't have the little pull tab, you can just set the round in there, just like that, centered up, and close your feed tray. Okay. Then, charge it twice. And then you're ready to shoot. Great, let's shoot. Awesome, let's do it. Well, we actually can. Okay. Crankfiresystems.com makes a crank. Oh, let's do it. So like an old school Gatling gun. Oh, yes. So let's give that okay, a go. Okay, let's do it. I'm ready. So that was pretty awesome. <laughs> Boombinaries.com did not disappoint, no. but we're going to step it up. We have here the infantry tripod. Uh, 
which uh, I do have a T&E or Traverse and Elevation, uh, which I'll show you a little close up of that here in a second. So what we're gonna try and do is set up a row of these bad boys and just kind of cut drive across them and see if we can't uh, just, just make a lot of noise as quickly as we possibly can. <laughs> so, all right, I'm gonna show you how to set up the infantry tripod. Okay, great. It is uh, no more complicated than the aircraft tripod. Okay. Uh, and it looks like this right here. Now, this is an aftermarket tripod, uh, which I just recently had powder coated and looks gorgeous. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, it has this little front leg right here, and you want to put that, much like a Claymore, front toward enemy. So, out in front, and then grab each of these and just pull out. Now, there's a little catch right here on the back. I'll show it to you. Okay. You can see it a little bit better, and it just locks in right there. We're going to move this forward a little bit so it's actually in the grass, uh, in the road here anyway. See it a little bit better. So get those good and anchored. Another nice thing to have here, a couple sandbags. Yep. Throw across the back just to kind of weight it down a little bit, keep it in place. Now the other thing this has, which is really nice, is a quick detach which is right here. So if you will flip around here and lift that little lever, I will lift this into place. So all right, that gives us our traverse locked into place. Our T&E here just goes back on the bar and can lock down and gives it this nice fluid back and forth. And we're able to also increase our elevation. which will put us about right. And here we go. What you might have also noticed is we have the crank oh. installed. So this crank is actually from Crankfire Systems. Uh, you can go online and check them out. I'll put the links in the description below. Uh, very, very neat. Uh, basically, the faster you turn it, the faster it fires. Oh, great, awesome. It also has the ability to fire a single round at a time with this little, just the press of this button here. So okay. you can you can do either with that you like. Okay. Um, it's pretty easy to put on, just slides over the pistol grip and uh, there's a little pull pin on the bottom, puts it all together. You also may have noticed I have a rail system uh, for this 1919, which uh, can be a little difficult to find, uh, but I'll try and put some links below to, that might help navigate you to, to places that you can find these things. Um, I do, it's typical I'll put a laser on here or something neat like that that is, it helps a lot with, uh, you know, sighting this. Um, so we're actually going to see how accurate this thing can be as far as the traverse and elevation goes. Great. So we have it set up. Do you remember how to load it? Yes, I do. All right. Now, the one thing that the infantry tripod doesn't have is a place to put your can. So it just kind of sets okay. over here. Now, uh, Typically, uh, this weapon system is fired by four people, uh, usually two people to carry ammunition for it, because as you imagine, it goes through it fairly quickly. Oh, yeah. Uh, one person, which is the loader, and they're going to be on this side, and then one person to operate and fire it. Uh, okay. So I'm actually on the wrong side of the weapon, <laughs> okay. but for the purposes of you at home watching us here, um, I don't want to be in the way. <laughs> so uh, if you remember how to do this, walk me through it. you've got to do it angrily yes and then what what's the one thing you really want to remember when you charge it oh keep your um, thumb out uh, palm up why uh, because these get really hot and they could fire at will you want to make sure your hand is away from sure ba side. yeah basically just just safety factor of it you just want to keep your hand your thumb out of the way so you don't get it dislocated or broken because this right. machine will do it for you for free I'm all sure day. it will <laughs> So go ahead and charge right. it up for me. Okay. Beautiful. Ready. Now the one thing we don't have is something laying under the gun to catch all our brass and our links, oh. which is okay. We'll let them hit the ground and I'll pick it all up for you. Okay. You're a nice guy that way. <laughs> he 
is. All right, so I'm gonna get on the proper side of this weapon because <laughs> you should never be on this side of the weapon as it's firing for sheer safety. So, now that you've got it pointed in a good and safe direction, okay. all you have to do is turn the crank. Let's crank it, Let's crank it. Enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> Seven-year split. She sees it. Great setup. And she makes the conversion. That was a blast. Yes, it was. And I hope I convinced you that semi-auto is just as much fun with the right accessories. Absolutely. Well, if you'd like to check out any of those accessories we talked about, I'll add the links below. And if you're interested in owning your very own 1919A6, then check out a Shotgun News or your local gun store to point you in the right direction. A huge thanks to BoomBinaries.com for providing uh, the amazing exploding targets today. And another huge thanks to Marnie for joining me. And don't forget to check out my fan page, Holly Heartthrob. Uh, click the link below. It's on Facebook. Now, if you'd like to see a bit more what Dire Times has to offer, you can click here for my Mac 10 makeover, or here to check out some of my adventures at the world's largest machine gun shoot, or here for some practical survival tips. As always, be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. I'm your host, David Dyer. This was Dyer Times. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. BoomBinaries.com, the most fun you can have without breaking the law. Boom, baby.